Pretty good win for you guys. Very Especially good after win. Thursday, I feel like you regrouped and did some things a little bit better defensively. Yeah, yeah we, we spent a good hour on Friday just working on our fundamental defensive stance and help side. And then tightening up our zone, our 1-2-2 two two was really effective tonight. Um, keeping them out of paint, uh, guarding the perimeter guys. But that was just the fundamentals. We didn't change anything magically. We, we, we actually just did what we're supposed to do for two full halves, 40 minutes. And I think the guys feel great about it. Friday was a, a tough day on them. I mean, there was, there, there was uh, as much intensity I've shown to our, that group of guys um, for a couple years that, that this is just unacceptable. We've got to play with a more dialed in team focus on help and recovery. And it's, we're capable of beating any team any, on any court at any time of the year. But we, we can't do it the, the way we played the first half against IPFW. And uh, that second half was respectable. I thought this was the best two halves of basketball we put against. Against a very good team, I think, was 7-1 and one going into the game. Um, or were they 6-1 and one coming into the game? So handing them their only second loss. Uh, uh, beating a team that Cal Poly uh, has not beat since 1971. Uh, somebody else told me we've lost 16 in the last 17 years. I, I, I didn't know that one because I know that three years ago we beat them over at the Save Mark Center and, and now finally get a win here. Uh, finally, we can maybe, maybe start looking at calling it a rivalry. It's not a rivalry if, 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 if Cal Poly doesn't win. If you, if that, that's, called, that's called getting run over. Okay, and, and hopefully we're doing that. We can, we can stop being run over by uh, a, a good little rivalry with Fresno. Great crowd, great environment, great focus. Um, a lot of fouls at the end of the game, not very exciting end of the game, but that's the way that goes. How about Taylor Sutliff? He seems like he's getting stronger each time out and shot the ball obviously really well tonight. What do you like about what he's well, doing for you? I'll tell you what I like about what Taylor's doing is, is, is Taylor uh, did not play very well defensively last game, and I think he, he hangs his hat sometimes too much on making a shot, making a nice pass. I think with Keon Taylor, he had, he had a couple of rebounds in there, a couple kept the ball alive, a couple of block offs, a couple of intangibles besides. Say, so Taylor, you're supposed to make shots. That's what you're in there for. But to get better, for us to be better, it, it, Luke Meekle, Taylor Sutliff, uh, uh, guys that can knock down shots, even Reese Morgan, knock free, that, that's great. But that's, 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 that's your given skill. We have to have those guys develop the other skill parts of their game. And I, and I thought defensively he was better. Um, he was able to cut what we call guard your yard, a yard left and a yard right. You got to be able to guard that area and, and recognize when the help position's got to be there. And I thought that was as, as important as the, the five for five. I don't want to belittle anybody, but you know what? You, most people see the stats, who made the shots. But as the other night, you, you know, nobody wanted to talk about who, who got isolated, who got beat on the bounce the most. No, you know, no one's ever asked me that question. Um, and, and that's probably that starts when you when you're locked in on defense. You can flow and you relax a little more on the offensive end. So, not to ask you another offensive question, but Luke, <laughs> Luke continues to give you, he gives you a nice spark off the bench, it seems like, oh. each time out. And is that, that role sort of what you see for him throughout the season? Well, I hope he can embrace that role yeah. all year long. I hope that we don't have to uh, uh, change it much because uh, it gives, uh, allows us to do a lot of different things. We can play Joel at the five if we want to go quicker. We can, we can play uh, uh, eventually maybe even the Josh Martin out there with him. We can go three, three medium-sized guys across uh, the, the zone. So a lot of things that we can do and have interchangeable parts. And I think that's the biggest part for us right now is, is to, uh, getting Jalen Shedd back was nice. We got 8, 10, 12 minutes out of Jalen. Gave Ridge a little bit of blow that way, you know. Um, you know, I think th those are big things you look at. You know, having having enough energy. What do we end up? One, two, three, four. We have nine guys with double figure minutes, and and I think that's really important because it's a long season, and you get you get the rolled ankle that Jalen had the other night. You get somebody with a hip point, or you get somebody with a, a headache, and, and and having enough depth where the guys can step in and uh, you know cover for each other. You know, it's a it's a consortium that we have to have for people that, that work with each other. And, and that's what a team is, and that's what a family is. And, you know, if I can't get the kid at school, can you pick them up? You know, that's what we got to be able to do. And, and do that do that comfortably. Right. You know, not feel like we're pulling each other's teeth because we, we cover each other's back. Oh, so-and-so didn't shoot the ball very well. But, but who did tonight? You know, you turn around, okay, Joe Alwich, he's one for seven. Uh, uh, Shipley goes 0 for 3. Now, in the, in the past, if, if we went 1 for 10 out of uh, uh, all which ship, that game's over. We lose. But now, off the bench, you know, you get, you, uh, goes 3 for 3, but you get, you know, Reese, Reese hitting 2 for 6, Shed off the bench 1 for 1, and Luke Meikle 1 for 1 from 3 point line. So, guys off the bench, they go 4 for 8 for us. And that gives us a spark that we haven't, we did not have that consistent offensive punch off the bench. And we score 77 points again. You know? And so, 
those who think that we're going to stop and start walking out, no, we, we ran, we pushed it against a, probably a more athletic and aggressive team than Cal Poly. It was Fresno State. Joe, Dave goes 9, 8, and 7 in 33 minutes. Um, kind of a, just a complete game, it seems like. Uh, really seemed like he was a spark. Uh, you talked about intangible kind of plays, especially in the first half as you guys kind of extended out that lead. Can you talk a little bit about his like ma the maturity of his game? Well, Dave plays best sometimes when you sit him down. And he took a, he took a poor shot the first three or four or five minutes. We subbed him out first with Reese, and he sat, sat there for about four minutes. Said, Dave, you're a great driver, you're a great passer, you're a great rebounder, you're a great defender. You don't have to take a three to prove it to anybody. You know, if the shot clock's going down, fine. You know, you got to take a shot there. And he knows it. But it was like everybody want to you know want to try ice cream a little bit more here and there and see if they can you know uh, but you're allergic to it okay so don't don't force it he does so much force in other areas he embraces that and we're we're a highly effective team you look at his numbers seven assists two turnovers I mean nine points eight rebounds I mean he's, I told him you know it's legal to get a triple double that's you got to be your goal it's legal go go for it Matt steal it towards the end of there too I mean it's nice to have a guy who can stand at the top and. Jump and get that ball, right? Yep, yep. And I said, where is it down? Keep tracing. Stay in your stance. Stay focused. You're going to, you know, somebody will break down. I think the, uh, the 12 assists, um, they, they did a nice job with 12 assists, only six turnovers. But we, we try to get away from trying to go for steals and start going for contested shots. And that we did a much better job. And I, I think W was like, everything was trying to get a home run. We're trying to lunge here and steal there. You noticed how much they were moving the ball and their drive here, and they're getting wide open shots. Tonight, you saw very few wide open shots. Uh, at BFW, there was 20 open shots. Okay, tonight there might have been five. And then you count one hand how many flat footed we call wide, you know, flat footed, just sitting there waiting to shoot it. So, big improvement. So, you guys have these two games this week. Now you have, what, nine, ten days off um, before you hit the road to St. Mary's, right? Yeah. Um, what, what's the kind of schedule look like for the guys? Um, what are you guys doing going forward? Well, we give them uh, four days off, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday off. We just ask them to try to shoot, sweat, be elliptical um, on their own, lift weights on their own, do everything on their own based upon their final schedule, study schedule, energy schedule, and just kind of decompress from that and just really focus on that. Coaching staff takes off. We have one coach going to Florida. I'm going to lovely Detroit this month, or uh, that's uh, Monday morning. Um, I actually got to go buy a Christmas tree tomorrow, so that's kind of cool. Uh, I get I get a good uh, 24 hours at home, watch some tape, get ready, hit the road recruiting. Coach Fortier will be on the road, and, and so we'll we'll do our job out there. Then we'll come back meet Thursday night in most finals. And only about three kids will have any finals on Friday, so we'll have a Thursday evening practice. Go Friday after the final final, and then uh, Saturday we'll go morning practice and drive on up to the Bay Area and start the start the journey. So it's a 12 day, uh, 12 12 days, 11 nights. And uh, our longest has been 14. I said, well, now we'll find out. You know, like I said, how, we're going to find out a lot about our character of a team. We, when we lose, a, lose at the buzzer, so to speak, again, on Thursday night, uh, we come out here, we want to lay, lay an egg and lose a back-to-back -back at home nights and, and uh, that kind of, you know, cry in our soup a little bit. That, that, that we're not a very high character team. I thought this was the biggest character check of the year to, to play a very, very good Fresno State team on our own court, bounce back. And we said, this is like the weekend that we're going to experience when you play a, a Santa Barbara and a Long Beach State. And you're playing a Irvine and a, and a Riverside, you know? They're, it's a Hawaii and Northridge. I mean, it, here comes Davis. I mean, there's going to be really well-coached teams with good players and good game plans. And, and we've got to be able to kind of understand this is, this is what the norm is, a Thursday and a Saturday. Um, this is typical of what a Big West uh, schedule is, and so to, to, lo to lose one at the buzzer, okay, but why did we lose? And, and we cleaned that up. Um, last question, uh, when can we expect Josh Martin to be in the lineup maybe, or what, what are you hoping then? We hope to what get can some, fans kind of expect? Yeah, we hope to get him some minutes uh, up at St. Martin's. Well, he's been practicing with us, so he knows plays, he knows fundamentals, he knows it. Uh, he's such a high energy guy, I, I would anticipate the first couple games he's going to make a few mistakes off of jitters, energy, and trying to do a little bit too much as is common for someone that uh, hasn't played for a year and a half now. I mean, he, he played limited minutes at Minnesota for the half the year they transferred out, and he's been here for a full year now. Um, he's excited to go, and so we'll blend him in. And we talked about it, worked on it. You know, he said we're certainly not going to start, and certainly not going to play 30 minutes. He's going to, you know, find his way into rotation, find his way. You know, he's got to, he's got to play hard and 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 sound, and but he can give us another spark and another uh, consortium member. 
You know, every day we want we want to have another another athletic body, another eager body, another smart body, another team body that says, "Hey, that's a lot of talent out there." So that there, when when somebody else goes one for set, yes, somebody can come in and, and go high fly and get another rebound. It's not just about Joe Alwich and they're getting those rebounds or driving. You know, so Josh, Josh is going to be an exciting player for us. But my expectations, as I told him, I said after seven games. I'll worry about where you're at. I said, just, just, just give yourself seven games. Seven games is my number for everything that says kid coming off a knee, wrist, back, transfer. It, you need six, seven games. Uh, you know, it's not two or three. You know, it be, because it has to get to that point that you've done it enough that you go like, oh yeah, I'm comfortable with that. You know, and you drive someplace seven times. You really got it down. You know, it, it, it takes more than a couple times to think that you just flow right in there. So we'll be patient, we're positive with it, and we'll go from there. Quick, David's back. Uh, I think he'll be fine, David. Okay. Uh, and if not, we have four days off. You know, he, he's he's kind of guy that um, he heals quickly. Um, you know, if it, if it was real serious, we would have known about it right after the locker room. So, um, and Jalen was able to limp through a few quality minutes here and there. So I thought, you know, he'll, he, another four days of rest for. We have we have four guys we're concerned about always. Is is Reese Morgan's knee. Uh, Luke Me uh, Luke Meikle has a hip situation, and we've got a, a, a Zach Gordon's got a knee ACL. He's coming off. He's got the brace on it, and Taylor Sutton's coming off ACL surgery. So, having this pseudo uh, educational break um, gives their body the timely time to get rested a little bit. Four days off, four days to prepare, twelve days on the road should be fine. Uh, Brian Bennett was in foul trouble early. Can you talk a little bit ha about how your other big guys like Zach Gordon stepped up tonight? Well, we wanted to change the lineup up and actually started Brian. And I think that what, what Brian was a little little uh, extra um, enthusiasm and probably was a little too zealous on a couple of plays. Um, and one in the transition, I said, you, you know, you don't want to blow him up when, it, when you know you probably could have just guarded him for a while. Maybe somebody else comes there, you give him the two, you know, give him the two, but you try to deter it as much as possible. You know, it's a play if it's we're ahead by, if you only got one foul and there's three minutes to go and we're ahead by eight and they, we only got 14 fouls or something that they that. But you know, that was enthusiasm that he had. But the nice part was Zach Gordon, Luke Meikle were able to come in and play the zone. We don't have to be as much in positions to have a big in there. But like Zach gave us valuable minutes. Again, um, he's a spark, rebounded it, made a couple free throws, uh, did a nice job. And then Luke Meikle. Um, move Joel Alwich over to the five and bring Luke in as a four, and they both play the baseline of our zone, and so uh, we're much better that way. Anything else? All right, thank you guys.